one measure of artwork is originality, how different it is from other works of art. And certainly that's the case with this particular building. Because as one drives, whether it was in Cheyenne or Laramie or, or uh, as, as far as that goes, Denver or Los Angeles, if we're talking about the West in general, uh, one won't find a building like this. Then when one thinks of the, its architect, its architect is from the West. Antoine Predock is from the West. And uh, there, are many character, there are many aspects of this building that are related to cultural traditions, whether they be the kiva, whether they be the, the old lodges at the national parks. There are all these Western traditions that are an integral part of this building, although when one sees it, one's, uh, one's first reaction is, this is entirely original and doesn't look Western, as a lot of people think. But if one looks at the elements of the building, then one sees the West reflected in it. This building combines two different functions in the Centennial Complex. One, the Art Museum, and then two, the American Heritage Center. And the American Heritage Center has a space within it which is absolutely fascinating. It's a series of columns that are uh, built of a concrete block, I believe. And it forms, these columns form like a forest that go up approximately three stories high. And then surrounding those, those columns uh, are staircases. Um, and what it reminds you of, it is what it's reminiscent of, are the great lodges at the national parks that had the fireplace in the center, a series of columns that held up the roof, and then a series of balconies around the exterior. Now, the difference the thing that's so wonderful about this space is, is that although it reflects the architectural traditions of the West uh, in terms of these great national park lodges, the other thing it does, by having these columns, which are not small columns, but are actually good-sized columns, it creates a series of rooms within this, what would be a very large open space, so that whether you're a scholar or a student or someone just interesting in looking at the collections, one can go into these smaller spaces created by these columns and have a chance to be silent and read the materials, do your research, etc. One of the things that some architects at least try to achieve with their buildings is architecture as sculpture. And one of the reasons that I picked this particular building to include in the book was its very, very strong elemental form and its tie in its, its uh, conic shape to the, to the mountain ranges around here. And candidly, I can't think of another museum in the United States that has this strong of an elemental form. And I think a lot of people are very intrigued by that, not just by the shape itself, but the way the fenestration is done. In other words, the way the windows are brought into the copper cladding. One interesting thing about Mr. Predock, in addition to him being an architect, he also uh, loves motorcycles. And no, he doesn't drive a Harley Hog. He drives something with far more sophistication and interest. He drives a Vincent uh, Black Shadow, which was a motorcycle that was created, I believe, in the 50s or the 60s in England. And is an absolutely beautiful, beautiful bike, and was one that set world land speed records out on the Bonneville Salt Flats. One of the things that Predock talks about is movement in architecture. And if you go, I don't get it. Where's the movement in this? Isn't this a static form? And my response is no. Because when you look at the form, and as your eyes rise along its surface, you have this sense of ascendancy. And I think this is part of, uh, part of who Predock is, his sense of movement, his his uh, love of the open road. Whether you're just looking up the outside of the building or whether you go in and, and go from one space to the next and wind your way through his gallery spaces. There are a total of 39 museums in the book. Uh, the first criteria was that the architect be one that was well recognized and had a body of work that indicated that he or, or she um, was exceptional. 
Uh, the second thing that I did was I went to leading architects and architectural historians at universities. And what I did is when I worked with them in developing the final list. So the um, museums that are in the book do not simply reflect my own taste in architecture, but more importantly, the um, expert opinion of a variety of architectural historians and, and leading architects in the United States. My book covers 1938 to 2008, but I, tr I believe the true period of the Golden Age was the 1990s. This was a period of tremendous economic growth in the United States. This was an, uh, a, a period in which collections were growing. Uh, the exhibitions were drawing greater and greater numbers of people. And what museum trustees and directors wanted were spaces, were buildings that were as important architecturally as the collections they contained within them. Something developed during this golden age which hadn't really developed in the past. Uh, in, the, in the past when you looked at a, uh, a museum, and let's just talk about the Metropolitan Museum of Art, what you saw was a, cla a structure that reflected the classical traditions, whether it be Greek or Roman. And the architecture conveyed that this was a bastion of culture. This was a place where one came to learn about the arts. Now, when you look at the buildings, they're more like this. And what I mean by like this is, is that one of the reasons that this building was designed the way it was, I believe, was that the form itself was attractive and it would attract people inside the building. And when you think of the Center Georges Pompidou in Paris, they were designed so that people would be excited about the facade and be drawn inside to look at the galleries. So in a sense, the architecture almost becomes a marketing device. These buildings are really breaking ground, new ground, and, and, and um, rethinking and developing new traditions. One could uh, take a look at the evolution of architectural design and start in terms of museum design, modern museum design with the Guggenheim, and then go uh, from that building to this particular building by Antoine Predoc, uh, and take a look at, at how things have changed. In terms of just basic forms, uh, one of the differences is that this is a conic shape, um, and it's large at the base and narrow at the top. Whereas Frank Lloyd Wright's Guggenheim is an inverted ziggurat and instead is broad at the top and, and uh, more narrow at the bottom. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily call it an historical evolution, but I would say that there's, there's some similarity in terms of using a basic uh, primal form, a basic geometric form, uh, which is certainly part of the modern um, architectural traditions. So this is a, a classic example of a building that the exterior is very interesting in its own right, but that the gallery spaces work beautifully also. So I, I think it's going to stand the test of time, yes.